Ladies and gents, welcome back to Tony vs. the World. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Tony vs. the World. I am your humble and gracious host, Tony. And guess what? As usual, we're going to go around the world again today. We're going to go to a special place, Belize, in South America. So right now, it's kind of weird. The United States is not really allowing our citizens to travel internationally, but there are some countries that are allowing us in. And guess what? Some of the islands and some of the Caribbean islands are letting us in and Belize is definitely on that list. So this is going to be right on time for you guys who are thinking about taking a trip that's not too crazy, but at least that's a little out of the United States. So we're going to talk about Belize, watch the video, come back afterwards and we're going to talk about it. So here we go. As soon as I got to Belize, one of the first things I had to do was explore. So I took a ferry to one of the keys out in Belize, it's called Key Colger. And this ferry was about $17 and it was really cheap for a round trip. So I took it, had some fun, and this is what I saw. About 20 minutes into the ride, we stopped at this really small island. I mean, it was like maybe a mile long, maybe not even that to pick up some supplies and we actually took it to the Keys with us and it was a bunch of food and things like that. Once we got there I had to explore but I was starving so I had to get something to eat. This random place I ran across served burgers and fish and chips and it was mostly a bar for people to come in but I was hungry so I had to eat first. So you guys know how it goes. First the food, and then we get to <laughs> So after that, all right, now it's really time to explore and walk around. So honestly, what I just do is just get lost. I mean, the island is really really not that big. You can probably walk around the whole entire thing and hour maybe maybe not even that so you know you can't really get too lost so I just walked around said hi to people walk down random alleys and just had fun people were outside just barbecuing relaxing talking to their friends everybody was eating everybody was super super friendly and you know once I started to get to like the water and the beach area <laughs> that's where all the fun was everybody was playing in the water and riding their jet skis and things that was nice to see so something inside me just said go walk down this random alley and you know see see what I could see see what I could find and it wasn't like walking down a random alley where you might you know anything might happen to you it was really really open area and I just wanted to see the other end of the island the other side where all the boats and things come into. Once I got past the houses, the island opened up to this super, super picturesque scene, so you know what I had to do. I smelled this guy's barbecue from the whole opposite side of the island. I definitely wanted to get some. So believe it or not, everybody was friendly here. Everybody wanted to say hi, ask me where I was from and all of that. I mean, granted, they wanted to sell me things and take me snorkeling and stuff like that, but they still were nice and everybody was um, really, really friendly here. So after I sat there and talked with those guys, like literally for a half an hour, I went to the whole opposite side of the island where they had this big giant bar called the Lazy Lizard. That's where everybody was going to sit there on a pier and have a drink and swim in the ocean and things like that. 
this is really where you want to be when you go to Cape Coker. The great part about it was, even though this bar is really, really big and really crowded, you still can find your own spot. And of course I had to get in. So that was my experience in Keith Coker. I spent a few days there, but I wanted to explore Belize on the mainland too. So when I came back, I actually heard about this place called Patun Ha. This is where the ancient Mayans lived hundreds and hundreds of years ago. They say they actually started this civilization in like 900 BC or something like that. Crazy. One tip for you guys if you ever come here, bring insect mosquito repellent. It's literally in the middle of the jungle. They say the largest temple here is only about 50 or 60 feet high, but you gotta think, in that time, how did they build these amazing structures? It was just a wonderful experience. All right, that was my experience in Belize, and if it looked fun, trust me, it was. Um, it was a different experience. I got to meet some people and spend some Belizean dollars, which is super, super colorful. That's on a side note. Um, this is a really nice place. If you have a chance to go there, go. It wasn't that expensive for me to go. I was coming from the East Coast and they actually had me stop in Houston and then take the rest of the way going to Belize. So I think it was about total, maybe like a six hour ride or something like that, but that that's including the stopover in, um, in Houston and going the rest of the way. So it really wasn't that far. Go, go, go. Belize is super, super nice. It's fairly safe. I mean, obviously, you know, don't walk down a dark alley at night, but during the day, super, super nice. You'll have a great time. It's great food to eat there, great people to meet. Trust me, you'll love it. So in Belize, I actually went to some of the islands that they have, and they're actually called Keys. It's funny because they spell it a little bit differently, but the pronunciation, what I heard from uh, somebody that lives there, is actually Key, like K-E-Y, but it's spelled C-A-Y-E. It's weird, just take my word for it. So uh, there's actually two popular keys to go to, and one of them is Key Coker, and the other one is Key Ambiguous. So I went to Key Coker on this particular trip. I actually went to Ambrigus too, but this video is about Key Coker. So Key Coker is a really, really small island. Everybody is super, super tight knit in there. And believe it or not, they have like little hotels on there because they know people want to come from the mainland to come visit the Keys. And the hotels are really, really inexpensive. I'm talking like maybe $20 a night, maybe, if that. And the room really wasn't that bad. I had um, a nice king size bed, air conditioning TV. I mean, I didn't use any of that stuff, but it was just nice to have, even for 20 bucks. So I stayed on the mainland, took the ferry, and the ferry was about 20 bucks, and then got a hotel when I got there for, again, about 20 bucks. So the whole trip, just going to the Keys, I mean, cost me like $50 because I took the other $10 and I ate. I ate all day long, drank. Everything is super cheap there. The Belizean dollar is actually double uh, what the American currency is. So if you have one dollar, you have two of their dollars. So when you eat there, trust me, it's in your favor. Go there, have a nice time, go to all the keys, take the ferry. Uh, also, I went to a tune hub. Believe it or not, crazy place. Um, it looks like there's nothing there and trust me there really isn't but you know just when you sit back and think about these structures that have been there for thousands and thousands of years that's it's it's the same big huge blocks of stone there's no way that these people could have moved this stuff well at least I don't know how it's really really weird 
but it was nice to see. The only problem is it, it's, it really, really is in the middle of the jungle. So, I mean, me, I was getting bit up. Like bugs were biting me, mosquitoes were biting me all over my legs, all over my hands, obviously, because I had shorts and a t-shirt on. It was really hot there. But other than that, it was a really nice experience. Um, I had a driver, actually I hired a driver from my hotel, cost me about $30, and he drove me from my hotel uh, all the way to the ruins. And when I got there, you know, he was really, really knowledgeable. So he walked the whole way with me, talked, talked to me about everything, told me a little bit about the history, and I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, that's just one of the things that, you know, you'll learn when you get there and see these people that they're really, really nice and welcoming, especially when they see us come to explore uh, their home. Like I said before, this is one of the places that you wanna go, especially now when it's open and it's not too far away and it's not too expensive. If you guys wanna travel, make sure you put Belize on your list, check it out, check out the mainland, check out the keys, um, do, what you, do what you gotta do. The only regret that I have is Belize is actually one of the places that has a super crazy natural wonder that I want to see. It's called the Blue Hole. And it's this huge, huge hole in the middle of the ocean that's like, it's like a sinkhole. So when you see it from above, there's all this crazy blue water that's around it. But this hole is super, super dark and people have actually dove down in there and they see all types of marine life that you don't see anywhere else in the world. It's really, really weird. You gotta Google it. It's called the Blue Hole in Belize. But, so, that's it for this video. You know how this goes. If you guys like this content, like, subscribe, thumbs up, give me a comment. Hey, if you guys are from Belize, drop, drop me a little comment in the comment box and I'll chit chat back and forth with you because I definitely want to come back there and I think I'm going to do it before this year is over. Don't, don't tell anybody that. Anyway, I'm Tony. This is Tony versus the world. Thanks for watching.